The climate crisis dominates the headlines in the media today. We are constantly being fed the narrative that we are failing in the fight against climate change and that the UN's sustainable development goals are unlikely to be achieved by 2030. We are Nick and Talia. And in collaboration with Startup Lounge Africa, we are embarking on a mission to tell the positive stories of sustainable innovation across the world by meeting some of the most innovative entrepreneurs in the sustainability space who are implementing solutions that their countries, regions and our planet require to thrive. And, most importantly, we want to show that if we get behind and scale up these innovations, we can, in fact, achieve the UN's SDGs. This is our sustainable world. Kenya a country famous for the quality and quantity of its wildlife. Around 2 million people travel to Kenya every year in hope to catch a glimpse of lions, elephants, giraffes and flies. We've travelled to Western Kenya to visit a business who has found an innovative and affordable solution to the rising environmental and financial costs of animal feed. Insect-based uh, feed production is a story worth telling. The black soldier fly is strengthening Kenya's aquaculture sector and has the potential to revolutionise global agriculture, all from a fish farm on the shores of Lake Victoria. Working with others is fundamental to success. We do, however, warn our viewers that this episode might get you feeling a little squeamish. <laughs> Humans are omnivores, meaning we like to eat meat, and actually, we eat a lot of it. In the past, we had to hunt these animals and could only eat what we caught. However, thanks to the growth of farming and agricultural practices, we no longer need to rely on a successful hunt for food. A more stable food supply chain has led to a population boom, which means we need to farm more animals than ever before. We now farm almost 1 billion cows, 35 billion chickens, and 200 million tonnes of fish every year to support the global population. But the question is, what do we feed these animals? This is soy, the crop that has been supporting the growth of animal farming for decades. In fact, almost 80% of the world's soybean crop is fed to livestock. But the rising demand for soy has come at a cost. It can contribute up to 50% of feeds carbon footprint and is responsible for a significant amount of deforestation. So what else can we feed these animals? We've come to Lake Victoria, the largest freshwater lake in Africa and the second largest in the world. This vast lake supports the livelihoods of approximately 4 million people, mostly through the large freshwater fishing industry. And just like animals, fish require protein to grow. So 6% of the soy produced in the world is used in aquaculture. The challenge with using soy in animal feed is the vulnerabilities of its supply chain, especially when it comes to global events such as the COVID pandemic, which can massively impact the cost. The price of animal and fish feeds continue to rise globally, and farmers are increasingly struggling to both afford and source the feed they need to run their livestock and fish farms. When you talk about soy and even uh, when you talk about the fish meal, they're very expensive and they are not easy to find. We actually you can't source them locally. We have to source them from outside the country. And that's why you find that the protein is the determinant of the cost of a feed. The lower the protein content, the lower the cost of that feed. In Kenya, over 150,000 tons of soy are imported annually from countries like China and Egypt. But one entrepreneur in Western Kenya is taking an innovative approach to dealing with the growing demand and cost of animal feed. My name is Fred Juma, the CEO and founder of the Victoria Fish Farm. Fred is a husband, a father, a collaborator, and the founder of Hydro Victoria Fish Farm and Hatchery. Fred is a leader driven by finding solutions that support and empower his community. And how is he doing that? Well, sometimes even the smallest creatures can have a big impact. The black soldier fly. It's a magic insect 
uh, that has been, a lot of research has been done on it and there's a lot of hope and promise that this is the insect of the future that will help us tackle the issues of uh, climate change, uh, improved nutrition, as well as climate, uh, environmental management. Insect farming is getting traction globally because of, of the ease of production, the very short life cycle, and also it requires less amount of space, less amount of water, and most importantly, the impact it has in terms of um, its footprint in greenhouse gas emission, which is significantly lower compared to other sources of productions like live, livestock or crop production. Black soldier fly larvae feed on organic waste by converting the waste they consume into nutritious organic compost, making them the perfect resource for both preventing waste being sent to landfill whilst also growing into a sustainable, cost-effective protein replacement in animal and fish feed. Working with the International Centre of Insect Physiology and Ecology and Masena University, Hydro Victoria Fish Farm discovered the multiple benefits of growing black soldier flies and decided to set up their own insectary. The process is simple. Black soldier flies lay eggs, the eggs hatch into larvae, who then feed on organic waste and convert it into high quality organic compost. The process takes 12 to 14 days for the larvae to reach the point when they're ready to be dried and added to animal or fish feed compared to the 130 days it takes for soy to grow. So what makes the black soldier fly so special? Because from from one ton of waste, it can actually give you about 300 kilos of insects and then about uh, 300 kilos of organic manure. We have over one, 125 million tons of waste produced in Africa. If you are able to use like the black soldier fly to recycle that waste, we are talking of producing more than 60 million tons of um, protein or tons of animal feed. Could the black soldier fly be the medical bug to tackle food security and climate change? We went to visit Dr. Eric O'Gallo, Senior Lecturer and Chairman of Animal and Fisheries Science, to tell us about the important research they are doing in this space. As a food uh, security specialist, uh, that's in terms of uh, fisheries, aquaculture, we are so much into research in food systems. One of the key successes of the work being done by Dr. O'Gallo is the team's creation of living labs where research meets reality. And so Juma was one of our um, living labs. Maybe use that catch word <laughs> uh, where we were testing some of these our innovations. Um, so we have been engaged in doing research in the feed sector, uh, in fish nutrition, as well as also in enhancing the growth performance of the fish species uh, that we use, especially tilapia and catfish that are quite and uh, you know, the major common species that our farmers grow. Having Hydro Victoria as a living lab has allowed Fred to bring his PhD research and his business together, allowing him to properly test new ideas, collect data, and share his innovative findings. So we realize that uh, when we test these things at the farmer level, then it is easier to now, through peer-to-peer -peer learning, for people like Fred to share our story. But it takes more than just one person to change the world. And when it comes to problems on such a large scale, you have to think about the whole system. I met Fred back in 2022, after he had joined the African Food Fellowship in 2021. He learned that you need to take a bigger picture view of the system. And in his case, it's the aquaculture space. Because whatever Fred is doing is actually having an effect on the entire aquaculture space in Kenya. However small you might think it is, but it's having a very positive effect. A big driver for Fred has always been how he can support the community he grew up in. In order to do that, he's created an ecosystem of local farmers, women, and young adults that work together to drive his circular supply chain. As well as generating waste on his own farm and in his home, Fred collects organic waste from the local hotels and restaurants he supplies his fish and meat to to increase his larvae yield, which he then sells to women and young adults in the county so that they can farm their own larvae on their waste, which they sell back to Fred for him to convert into the feed byproduct. Africa's population is expected to grow to 2.5 billion by 2050. The additional 900 million people will require animal products to survive 
and those animals will need to be fed. With the environmental and financial cost of soy rising, Hydro Victoria's innovation is a practical and sustainable solution that can be the catalyst for change across the agriculture sector. I think for Fred, um, the only way is up. And he will graduate with a PhD in fisheries and agriculture from this uh, laboratory. We'll be setting up a 10 ton per hour capacity feed plant. Set farming is actually the future. I can't wait for it to be available in the market. Uh, this is a very exciting space and I'm happy to be part of it. We can empower the youth and women within the Lake region, the Western Kenya, and influence the East Africa region. Right.